I believe that when the scriptures warn us not to be deceived by the elements of the world, that they're referring to these elements, even though they're not spelled out. We'll tell you why conspiracy theorists are having a field day. If I can, I try to stay in as profound a state of ignorance as possible. Uh -huh. Well, you come to the right place. Yeah. <laughs> we are exactly where you need to be. The annual Bilderberg Conference meets this weekend at a luxury resort in Switzerland, but the secretive nature of the meetings that first began in 1954 has sparked countless conspiracy theories by those who believe the group is trying to form a new world order of sorts. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. Hours before it was set to expire, Congress passed three controversial provisions of the USA Patriot Act, carrying the laws over for another four years. Fayette County, Kentucky is going to issue children RFID cards. And you guys do nothing but complain about how you can't stand it in this place here, and then you haven't got the guts just to walk out. What do you think you are? For to stay crazy or something? Already two schools in the district have approved RFID tracking devices and all student IDs. It's going to give us the opportunity to track our students in the building. It could be your medical records, it could be a diary, it could be the hard drive of a computer. It just told me how they do it. It can be an entire database of sensitive, you know, phone call records. And uh, once they get it, they're able to use it however they see fit. We are now entering the brave new world of smart meters. And you cannot turn these chips off. Smart meters are no different from wiretapping devices. Could a strange substance found by a Southwest Arkansas man be part of a government test? And in case you didn't know, wiretapping is illegal in all 50 of the states and the federal territories. Well, that's the question at the heart of a phenomenon called chemtrail. Now getting wide for attention. This is a double pyramid. This phenomena of chemtrails. A test report mentioned high levels of barium linked to those alleged chemtrails. Barium could be meant to wear down a person's immune system. He realized how they were running the world, and he put together this model, and he showed it to Alexander Sox, one of the most powerful men at that time in the nation. And Alexander Sox said, I can't stay here in the room and listen to you explain this if you want to be alive. We live in a place now that feels just about like a plantation. We're all indentured servants. The base supports the top. the top. This is not electrical metering. This is personal surveillance. This is a search without a warrant. Every day. Every day. If you take time away from a person who can think for themselves, who might say, oh, I'll go and read a book, I'll go and study something. Or if you can take that time away from them and have them mesmerized in front of a television set, then you'll keep them dumb, stupid, compliance, and, and going along with the system. You are tuned in to God's Property Radio. Here are your hosts, Sam and Dan. Welcome to God's Property Radio. I go by Sam. And I go by Dan. And this is episode three, Media slash Mind Control, part two with Leonard Ulrich. All right. Well, guys, this, this interview, or I should say this part, part two here is really intense. We start off into this article at the very beginning called PSYOP and Mind War, and I do not remember the author's name. I don't have it in front of me. Um, but to give you a little insight to this this I author... Do. Oh, well, we've got it. We've got it right here. Okay. PSYOP. It's called From PSYOP to Mind War, The Psychology of Victory by Colonel Paul E. Valley with Major Michael A. Aquino, PSYOP Research and Analysis Team Leader. Right. Uh, and I believe Aquino is the... Uh, one who actually wrote it, yes. Now, uh, you're going to learn this in the interview, but I just want to touch on it real quick. Aquino is such a diehard occultist that the Church of Satan, yeah, that wasn't good enough for him. He went and started his own occult to go a little bit deeper into the occult. So that gives you a, kind of a picture into this, this guy's mind. But he says here in the introduction to his letter that if anyone is to say that the Pentagon is uh, full of Satanists and that they're seeking to try and take over the world... Well, they're wrong and they're crazy and they're a conspiracy theorist. Yet, the man who writes this article for the Pentagon himself is a die-hard Satanist, like down to earth. <laughs> so I, I just found that personally to be very ironic. You guys are really going to enjoy this episode. We we touch on a, a lot of 
different things after this article. We do briefly touch on uh, the Boston bombings and Sandy Hook and Ooh, yeah. uh, Leonard's, whew, man, that was good, and Leonard's take on what was going on there. Now, and again, as, as you're going to hear Leonard say in this interview, no one knows for sure what went down. We can't. We weren't there. But we do know enough to say that the story that they're telling us isn't what happened. Absolutely. So just just take it as Leonard's opinion. Don't don't take it as, you know, the God's gospel or anything like that, as, as Leonard himself will say. But uh, just take it with a grain of salt. It's very good. I, I think Leonard's probably right on. But again, I don't know. We've also had some technical difficulties with this episode. Yes, guys, we forgot to mention that last time. I'll let Sam explain. Yeah, I apologize for that. We had some issues with um, the computer that we recorded the audio for this on. And every time that the computer overheats, the program cuts in and out of our microphones. Now, not only does it cut in and out, it actually interrupts the timing scale by shrinking every time it cuts the time spectrum. So I had to manually go in and cut every single phrase from Dan and my vocal tracks and bring them back because Leonard's was intact and ours weren't. I had to do that pretty much, I don't know, almost every few words. It was uh, pretty brutal, but I spent many nights and props stay, staying up for you know a four-hour interview <laughs> to paste everything perfectly, and in d- also in doing so, uh, I tried to mess with the effects a little bit. But you're going to get some latency and some echoing, and I apologize for that. Hopefully, for the next uh, few episodes, we'll uh, get things uh, under we, wraps. We are working on uh, ensuring that that's not going to happen again, and I just. I, Everyone, I want to say personally, publicly on the air, uh, props to Sam for doing that. That is, uh, for anyone who's ever done any kind of editing, audio or video, it takes a long time and four hours of time code to sift through and splice together audio is a lot of time and work. So thank you, Sam. No problem. No problem, you guys. I just want you to hear what Leonard has to say. All right. Well, then I think without any further ado, Sam, we should probably get into the episode. Absolutely. All right. Here is Media Slash Mind Control with Leonard Ulrich, part two. Here we go. This discussion is under the blood covenant of Yashua explicitly without prejudice and under reserve okay so we will we will now go to the paper i sent you uh which is called from psyop to mind war the psychology of victory okay i'm gonna i'm gonna wait till you guys have it in front of you we've got it okay first of all the cover page um, I'm going to put you guys on the spot, but it's not designed to display any ignorance. I need to know what you guys know about Colonel Michael Aquino. What do I know about him? Yeah. Um, Sorry, a, I, a part that he wrote, the the he, he wrote this paper, right? From Psyop to Mind War, right? That is correct. Okay. I think that, that's, that, that would be the extent of what we know. We didn't yeah. know of him until you sent us this paper. We got three pages in before we got on with you. So Yeah. Okay, that's all well and good because I needed to ask you guys that question because a conspiracy theorist couldn't make up what I'm about to tell you. It's that bad. Colonel Michael Aquino is in his late 60s, if not 70s by now. But back in the day, in the 60s, first of all, he's a colonel, which isn't easy to get. Uh, (laughs) He was involved in um, the Church of Satan in America. Oh, Anton LaVey? Yes, Anton Sandor LaVey. Not only was Colonel Michael Aquino involved in Anton LaVey's Church of Satan, As far as Michael Aquino is concerned, it wasn't hardcore enough. So, oh, oh, yeah. So Michael (laughs) Aquino decided to to uh, create his own splinter denomination called get get ready for this, the Temple of Set. Uh oh, whoa. Yes. Now that goes back to ancient Egypt and Babylon. 
And there is a rated R movie, and there's my warning, it's not for everyone, rated R movie, which you can watch in its entirety in YouTube, starring in part Colonel Michael Aquino, called The Occult Experience. I think it's copyright 1982. And he's sitting down, Colonel Michael Aquino, describing the occult experience in such intellectually loaded terms. And he says something which is so obviously against scripture that anyone who considers themselves to be a a Bible-believing Christian will just laugh at. And he says, the occult experience is essentially a journey of the self. It's essentially about oneself, one's selfish desires, about centering (laughs) oneself. And I'm going... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know, that's pretty well the exact opposite to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know? Yeah. Not, nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Or, or Jesus hanging on a cross saying, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. That's right. So I'm watching this and I'm going, you selfish occult guy. I mean, you couldn't have said it better yourself and you're not even aware of what you're saying. You know what? And that's that's exactly what Anton would say, though, too. Well, yeah, I mean, but except for one thing. And here's where it gets, again, I'm very conscious about what I'm saying because I don't want to appear overly sensational. Because if I do, I know that on the surface, I will damage my credibility until people actually look up what I'm saying and they discover, oh, my word, it's actually worse than what he's saying. So... Um, again, don't believe me when I say this. In fact, don't believe anything I say. Verify it for yourself and you'll actually discover. Yeah, it's worse than what he's saying. Colonel Michael Aquino was, well, in court on charges of pedophilia. And he was positioned or placed at the Presidio in San Francisco which was to be the original founding spot for the United United Nations until the Rockefellers uh, gave the United Nations organization uh, much more land in New York. They could afford to do so. So right there, you have a link between the United States military and its psychological operations and pedophilia and the international elite, as in the United Nations, and the occult, all in one man. Now, you think about that. Okay, now that is the background for what I'm about to say. Now, you need to know that because this guy isn't fooling around. And when I read quotations about two pages worth, and as we discuss it, out of the 10 pages of this document, which, which I will put on screen for all the listeners. You need to know this guy isn't playing. He's dead serious. He's inspired by demonic forces. He doesn't even necessarily know what he's saying. He's as dangerous as somebody on crack cocaine. They will do anything, say anything. They will even harm themselves for their next hit and they're not even fully aware of what they're doing, and they've got superhuman strength. Like, watch out for this guy. So, having said that, page one, or page two in your case. Okay, in the middle of page two, here I go. With the arising of the internet in the 1980s, however, Mind War, and that's the subject of this paper, Mind War, received an entirely unexpected and somewhat comic resurrection. Allusions to it gradually proliferated with its sinister title, quickly winning it the most lurid conspiracy theory reputation. So let's just pause there. Just pause. This guy is relying upon the label of conspiracy theory to dismiss any criticism of his theories. (laughs) 